What's up my friends, Mike again, glad to have you guys back. Welcome to today's episode of Best Mechanical Keyboards where I share with you guys my personal favorites that I've been using so far. So in today's episode, I have five keyboards to show you guys. So in terms of pricing, we have two budget options over here and then we have a mid tier over here and we have the more expensive options over here which are semi customized and fully customized. Also with these keyboards, we have the three types of switches as well. We got the clicky switches, we got the tactile switches and we have the linear switches. So we covered the whole spectrum. So hopefully at the end of the video, you guys are gonna be able to see the differences between all these different types of keyboards and ultimately find the one that works better for you. So full disclosure, I'm not a professional. I'm not an expert. I'm still learning about mechanical keyboards. There's just so much to learn about them. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what I like, what I don't like and do the sound test. And we're gonna move from the more budget options to the more expensive options. So starting with the Keychron K2, this is actually one of the most affordable and feature packed keyboards. I've talked about this in multiple videos. So with this keyboard, you can use it wirelessly or you can plug a cable in over here and you can switch the layouts between Mac OS and PC just with a switch of a button. So this keyboard specifically does use the blue switches. It's very clicky. And um, how about we just do the sound test and show you what it sounds like. So as you can hear, it's very clicky and it's very clacky as well. And that's one of the cons. Like it might be very addictive, very like amazing to beginners, like how I felt. But over time, the clackiness of it makes it a bit annoying, especially if you're taking calls, people can hear what you're typing. My wife can hear me typing when I'm upstairs and she's downstairs. So it's just very loud in general. And the reason why this is a more budget option is because you can't switch the switches inside, but you can switch the keycaps if you want for a brand new look. So this is the aluminum version. It has aluminum bezels on the side over here, but it uses a plastic housing on the bottom. So if you compare it with other keyboards, this feels quite light. However, the awesome thing about this is that it's feature packed. It has like lights and it's wireless and it's just a great starter pack, which leads me into the next keyboard over here. So this is the drop enter. Let me plug it in. So as you can see, it lights up beautifully. It only has one light and this keyboard is more of a simple minimalist keyboard where you can get a feel of what mechanical keyboards are like, but don't want to customize further. And I think this is a really solid option because the entire base over here is made of metal. It feels very substantial, very wholesome versus with the uh, Keychron, it feels a bit cheap. Also, it uses really nice keycaps over here. The original keycaps are actually all matte black. I just switched it with a drop alt over here, which I'll talk about later. With this keyboard, it does use Halo 2 switches. It's a tactile feeling. So it has a little bump first before you bottom out. But hey, who cares about that? Let's see what it sounds like. So as you can hear, the sounds are very different from the blue switches. So I really enjoyed using this keyboard for gaming, especially when I'm playing League of Legends because the keys just bounce back really quickly. So when you're really intense in gaming, it gives you that really nice tactile feeling. The keys just pop right back up. So again, this is a more budget option because we can't take out the switches in here. So you're kind of stuck with the Halo Trues. But before we get into the semi and full customization builds, let's talk about the Logitech G915. So with this keyboard over here, it's actually twice the price of the budget options. However, I do think that this is the best wireless mechanical keyboard on the market right now. So why is this keyboard so expensive? And that's because it uses its ultra low latency wireless connection using this USB thing over here. And I got this because the connection quality with the Bluetooth for my Mac mini wasn't working the best with the Keychron K2. It was working really good with my MacBook Pro though. However, after I switched to this keyboard, I never went back to the Keychron because the clicky sound over here is awesome. And this is what it sounds like.
So as you can hear, there's a lot more click than clack. So it's a lot quieter. And besides that, it's also feature packed as well. I think Logitech has one of the best customizable software that there is because you can set macros in the buttons and have memory options. And of course they have a whole community of people customizing the RGB lights. So there's different themes that you can just download. Instead of some other keyboards, you have to customize each LED by yourself, which takes a long, long time and it doesn't necessarily look that good. And also the battery life on this is really, really good. It lasts a long time and it has a scrolly thing, which I use to control volume. It is very, very smooth and addicting. And uh, overall, it's a very thin keyboard. And the good thing about it being slim is that you won't need a wrist rest while you're typing. So if you want something that's wireless, reliable, this is the best keyboard for that. However, some things that I don't like about it is that over time, you can see that the keycaps over here are getting a bit shinier. You cannot switch your keycaps or your switches. So you're kind of stuck with this. If you want to use new switches, you do have to buy another keyboard entirely. So at this point of the video, you guys might be asking like, oh, so why are hot swappable keyboards better? And uh, that's a good question. It's not necessarily better. If you like your keyboard, it's fine. However, I think it's better because with hot swappable switches, you can buy different switches and try them out. Because with this thing, I think it's a very addicting hobby. My brain just starts like wondering what is the perfect build. I want to try different ones. And uh, that's why I highly suggest getting something like this. So this is the switch tester that I got from Drop. This has 63 individual switches on it. And I'll just test them out quickly so you can see what it sounds like. Anyways, this is more like a fidget toy that I keep beside my desk. It's very addicting to just play on it when I'm bored. So you can get this or build your own. You can just get this acrylic frame and start putting it in your own switches. So this is the Drop Alt. You can buy it as a set or you can buy the bare bones and then add your own switches and all that. So for this, again, I took the black keycaps over here from the Drop Enter and I kept the original keycaps over here with the navy or gray. And I also got the wooden keycaps from Drop over here to make it look more hipster or unique or I don't know, like wood is cool. Just like the wood over here. It just gives it a very natural, warm look. So anyways, with the switches, I am using the Holy Pandas. So I didn't have to switch out the original ones, which I got the box white clickies. And let's just get into the sound test first. So as you can hear, the tactile feeling on this is really, really satisfying. So the Holy Pandas are really well known in the mechanical keyboard space, but they are quite expensive switches. And by the way, this is the Drop Alt High Profile. So it's different from the other one. So when you plug it in, it actually lights up like a rainbow. So it's very cool. You can see on the sides over here, it lights up and it moves around as well. One thing I do have to note is that these LEDs are very not diffused. So you can see each individual LED. So although this is a compact build, it does use the function button to utilize more controls. So you can change the different color LED patterns and all that. Also, because I'm not the biggest fan of the side lighting over here, you can actually turn it off and just have the uh, keys illuminating. I really like the look of this. So it looks perfect like that. But usually I'm not crazy about RGB anyway, so I can just turn it off for a more minimalist aesthetic and it just looks really cool. So again, this is pricier because of the build quality. This keyboard is really heavy. It actually uses this weight over here to make it that heavy and it just feels really substantial. And um, for some reason in the keyboard world, the heavier your keyboard is, the better it is. Yeah, maybe it's just a psychological thing. When you hold on to heavy things, it feels premium. And again, it is more expensive because it does use a hot swappable PCB board so you can take the switches out like so and then you can put another one in and that's why I kind of like the switch tester because I can just pop one out, put it in here like so and kind of get a better feel of what it sounds like because when you test it on this, it has one sound and when you put it into the board, it has a completely different sound. So this is kind of what it sounds like. 
So this is actually the box Jade. It's very clicky, has a very nice tactile feel as well. So there's a lot of customized keyboards out there. This is one of those semi customizable ones because a lot of stuff in here is actually like pre-built. It all comes from drop. Whereas with fully customized keyboard over here, uh, we'll see that you can actually choose all the parts yourself and get the exact feel. So again, this is using tactile switches. And now we're gonna see what the linear switches sound like. So as you can hear, it's very, very quiet. This is what they call the thock sound. Thock, thock, thock versus clack or click. This is actually my friend's keyboard that we built together. Like my friend actually looped all the switches inside to make the sound. We did do a lot of work with the stabilizers, although we do need to work on the space bar more. It still has a bit of a rattle, but it's a lot better than the Keychron K2. Like check out the difference here. You can hear the stabilizer inside like rattling a lot versus Yeah, there's a lot that you can do to make it sound better. Anyway, so with this keyboard, it uses a brass weight over here. We built this in our last video. It is very, very premium looking. The case is by KBD fans. We chose the plate behind it. It's actually made of brass and it turns out brass is the stiffest material. However, it matches the bottom very nicely because they're both brass and you can kind of see it on top. With the keycaps, we are using the Drop and Mateo Susu Watari MT3 profiled keycaps. So these are very different than all the rest over here. I think the other keyboards are using a cherry profile. So with these keycaps, they kind of have a little bump to fit your fingers. And also with the profile, you can see how it's different. So we really like the vintage look of it and it's very good for typing, although you do have to get used to it. So yeah, guys, this keyboard over here costs over $500 to build. Um, it's very customized. Surprisingly for myself, linears are kind of too quiet for me. They're a bit, I don't wanna say boring cause I don't wanna piss anyone off, but it is a very subjective and personal preference kind of thing. For myself, I really like the tactile feeling. It converted me from a clicky guy into a tactile guy, but I don't know with the Holy Pandas, there is kind of a click to it. I think it's when it bottoms out on the board, there's a click or it's more of a clack, but it's not as bad as the Keychron. So anyways guys, these are the keyboards that I have been using. So I do think that the Keychron K2 is the best in being feature packed while being affordable. Whereas the Drop Enter is the best in build quality at this price range. And with the Logitech G915 TKL, this is the best wireless mechanical keyboard in the market right now. And with the Drop Alt, I really like the look of it. I like the build quality. I think it's one of the best semi custom built keyboards that you can start really getting into customization. And of course there's other brands that are kind of like this. I I haven't tried them out yet. And that brings me to the fully customized keyboards. Of course, this isn't the best. There's a lot of other customizations you can make with different cases, PCB boards, foam and all that. So there is no best when you fully customize something. It's best for the person. So yeah, guys, let me know in the comments below what kind of brands you wanna see or cases or switches. This could be an ongoing series in the future. And if you wanna support that series idea, make sure you like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell on to get the latest updates about my channel from YouTube. And guys, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Again, comment below, let me know how I did in this video and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye.